We are back on Inside Politics. Our guest today is Nashville Attorney Elliot Osmond, who is perhaps the expert in terms of dealing with the local community, immigrant, immigrant community in terms of immigration. Uh, Elliot, um, the immigrant, immigrant community was quite excited. Uh, several hundred of them showed up at the council meeting when they approved this bill on second reading. <coughs> What's likely to be their feeling? Are they going to feel betrayed, sort of let down? Um, what kind of impact is that going to have for them now that this bill that will look like it was on its way to passing third reading in the council now looks like it's pretty much dead in the water? Well, there's no doubt that many of them are going to be disappointed. Um, but uh, I would uh, counsel them to be patient. Let Councilman Mendez uh, take a look at this. He's very, very smart. And I'm sure that in the end, he and his allies in the council will figure out uh, a good path forward. So I would counsel patience. Now, a lot of this got stirred up, although the bill, I think, was already in the council when we had this roundup here in Nashville of some of the Iraqi Kurdish <coughs> refugees. This was mm -hmm. part of the President Trump's uh, travel ban that also came up this week. We'll talk about in a minute in the Supreme Court. but. Uh, it looked like they were around, rounding up a number of people that are part of this because Iraq apparently did not get on the list of Muslim countries for the travel ban because they were willing to take back some Im some immigrants who had come here, some refugees who had come here. Some of those are, have been, I, I think, may perhaps have been your, you've at least counseled with if they're not your clients. Uh, one of them. And right now, a number of them, they have not taken them all into custody. This, this roundup has been stopped by another federal judge in a different state. Uh, is this matter likely to continue to be in litigation for some time? Oh, I think so. The, the order that you're referring to by a district court in Michigan uh, is only a temporary hold for two weeks. And so what's going to happen after that is going to depend on that court. That uh, litigation is being brought by the ACLU of Michigan. And they agreed to <clears throat> extend their lawsuit to all Iraqis, not only in Michigan, but in the country, throughout the country, uh, including the ones here in Tennessee. How many here in Tennessee have been detained that you're aware of at this point? I'm not aware of a number beyond 12. That's my last Most of understanding. Most those here in the Nashville area at this point? Yes. Now, uh, what happens to those people that are already detained? They're not released by ICE. They're not released by authorities, right? They're, they're no, they're sort not. Of in limbo at this point. They're in That's jail. Correct. They're not really charged with anything. We have to wait to see what happens in the court. They're in jail, but not here in Nashville. I, my understanding is that they've been transported to the federal uh, immigration facility in Oakdale, Louisiana. I mentioned the Supreme Court. It ruled this week to allow a good bit of the travel ban to go into effect. The uh, Muslim countries that were on the list for travel ban that will take effect sometime in the next few days. Um, what are your concerns about the federal government being able to implement that? It was a mess the last time they did it. Are they going to do a better job, you think, this time? Or are you ready to go back to court about it? Well, uh, I never was in court over the travel ban, but I think it's important to recognize that there are several exceptions to the uh, to the um, uh, to the travel ban going forward that the Supreme Court held. First, they have to let in students uh, that Those have already bona fide relationship with with the university. They have to uh, admit people that uh, have family members sponsors back here in the United States or employee or employers that's correct they have to uh, they have to um, admit uh, those people that have been sponsored by a refugee agency here in the state such as Catholic Charities uh, they've been vetted as refugees for two years and if they have been uh, accepted as being a sponsor uh, being sponsored by uh, a not-for-profit charity, those people must be permitted so to enter. So as you understand it in terms of refugees, we're not going to necessarily see those that are already in the pipeline and they have a bona fide reason to come here through Catholic Charity or something else. That's not going to be disrupted? That's my understanding of the Supreme Court's order. And so that's what's going to happen going forward. So the, the refugee resettlement here will not necessarily, although I don't know how much of it is still going on, but uh, that's still likely to continue to go forward. I think so. Now, um, the Supreme Court's going to hear the entire case probably sometime as early as October. But this travel ban only is supposed to last about 90 days when the administration reviews its policies. So what's the Supreme Court going to have to look at in October? There may, the ban may be 
gone by the wayside by then. Is the case likely to be mute, moot by then? Well, I think the Trump administration would argue that uh, that the 90 days doesn't begin to run until their travel ban is permitted uh, full enforcement. Uh, so I don't know that it would be considered moot. Of course, those people that have brought this litigation in the Supreme Court are going to take the position that it's already moot. But that's for the Supreme Court to determine. Now, the president said this was a 9-0 decision in his favor. Did, did you read it that way? No. I was, it was more like a 6-3, perhaps. Yes. I, I, uh, uh, president Trump has a tendency to exaggerate. Are you concerned that basically this ruling for him, which was clearly a victory in many ways, is going to embolden he and his administration to take further moves in terms of immigration policy, perhaps additional roundups of, uh, of citizens that he had talked about before, particularly when he was a candidate? Well, I think he's going to do that regardless of what the Supreme Court had held yesterday. Uh, I think we're headed to a series of massive roundups. Uh, uh, not only by ICE, but also by Customs and Border Patrol. There has been percolating inside the Department of Homeland Security a regulation that expands the jurisdiction of the Customs and Border Patrol from 100 miles within a border or an ocean or surrounding the United States to 500 miles. Uh, from a border or ocean. Now that would include Nashville and it would include almost all the inland of, of, uh, uh, of the United States. And this regulation would come into effect how? Would it just be promulgated as a rule or a regulation like any other federal agency? It would have to go through that. That wouldn't require an act of Congress or anything like that. It, 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 it's being treated as a regulation to be promulgated and not as a statute to be voted on by Congress. Elliot Osmond's our guest. He's a Nashville attorney specializing in immigration law. Back to continue our conversation about the ongoing controversy about immigration both uh, in Nashville and across the country after this break.